Hello. So today I'm going to talk to you about a very special topic. Uh, the instrument that I'm going to speak about today is bonds. Now, first, let me explain what a vanilla bond uh, looks like and how it works for the benefit of the audience. Let's say today I invest $100 in a bond. The face value of the bond is $100. Let's say the current market price is rather $97. So I invest by paying $97 and buy the bond. Let's say the bond has a validity period of five years. This bond carries an annual coupon of 9%. Whereas I am expecting at least 12% from the uh, corporate bond that I have invested. The question that arises is that, what is the price that I should be willing to pay for the bond? Now, like any other investment case, the Comparative is very simple. It's cost benefit, like any other financing decision also. The cost that I would be willing to pay would not be higher than the value of all future benefits that will accrue from this investment, but in present value terms. That is called the bond price. And the operating model is I will get coupon or the interest every year until maturity and at maturity, I will also get the maturity value back. So the capital appreciation as well as the coupon or the fixed income would be my return on the investment. And that is called as yield to maturity should I hold the bond until maturity. Let me demonstrate this with an example and also do some kind of sensitivity analysis around the same. Now, if you look at my screen here, we'll just take the example that I said, the future value of the bond or the face value of the bond is $100. The annual coupon is 9%. The E to maturity, which is my return expectation, let's say is 12%. And the bond has five years to maturity. Now, using this particular uh, case, we can actually find out the price of the bond with the information that is given here to us. Now, the information that is given to us is utilized with the PV function to find the price that I'm willing to pay for the bond, which is present value of the rate, which is the YTM, the yield to maturity, number of periods, which is five years, uh, payment, which is the recurring payment of the coupon, which is $9 in this case. The face value is the maturity value, and we will assume that the coupons are paid at the end of every period, giving you a price of $89.19. Now, it is a negative because it demonstrates or exhibits a cash outflow. We can also do a tabular approach, wherein I will plot the years here. Now, if you don't want to do one, two, three, four, five, you can also do one here. And there is a function called series. And take the column, step value of one, stop value of five, and you will get one to five here in the year. Next step is to find out the cash flows, which are pretty simple, which is your annual coupon, $100 into 9% per year, which is nine each, which you will get until maturity. And at the maturity, you will get an extra $100, which is your face value, maturity value. Discounting factors, we can do by one by one plus R, which is your yield to the power of N. I just freeze my yield because the, it's a static reference, it doesn't change. And then I can apply the discounting factors on the future cash flow. So what I write, present values. And I will then sum it up. And I will get the bond price, which is 89.19. Now you will observe that this is exactly the same. Okay. 
Now, in terms of the yield and the price, we can also do a sensitivity using the data table feature. So my yield is, I can pick it up from here, input and price output, I can pick it up maybe from here. And let's say I want to do a testing between 4% to 20% so that it's equidistant on both the sides. This case here is my base case. Now let's create the data table since we have established the input output relationship. Go to data, what if analysis, data table. In the column input cell, I'm going to input the yield input here, what feeds into the model and press OK, and I will get a price here. Now look at this case. So as <clears throat> what you observe here, that as the yield goes up, the prices of the bonds start falling, which demonstrates a uh, inverse relationship between yield and the price. If you see this zone here, uh, this zone, this is the zone where the yield is lower than the coupon. And therefore you see that the bonds are trading at a premium. This case is where the yield is equal to the coupon and the bond trades at par value. And this case here is the case where the uh, yield is more than the coupon and therefore the bond trades at discount. We can also do the similar testing using the developer tab. If you have the spinner here, you can add this spinner and put the YTN in, uh, input here, which is 12%. I rather put 12 because the developer doesn't handle decimals and percentages well. So I just take format control, current 12, the minimum value of four, maximum value of 20, incremental change one, and I link it to this number here. And I press okay. Now all I need to do, see, it's like buying a TV with a set top box. What we have done is we have now set it up and the remote is ready, but now we need to pair the remote with the television. So that we do that here, what we do is we link it to the spinner input. And now if this changes automatically, everything should change. For example, if I go up to 15, you will see that the price has changed to 79.89 and you will see a similar price here. If I go down to let's say six, 6%, 6 the price has changed to 112.64 and this is 112.64. Okay, at nine, you will see that the bond price is 100. It becomes a par value bond. So basically this spinner, ch spinner change functionality also helps you to do some kind of sensitivity analysis. Remember in sensitivity analysis, you examine the change of an independent variable and the impact on the dependent variable, one variable at a time. And that's how it's different from scenario manager, which can handle changes around multiple independent variables to examine the impact on the dependent variable. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, this will particularly help uh, students who are studying the subject fixed income securities, students who are preparing for CFA level one and the postgraduate MBA uh, program students who have advanced Excel as well as fixed, in fixed income securities or debt instruments as a part of their curriculum. Thank you very much. Stay tuned on my YouTube channel, Concept Canvas, and wish you all the best. Happy learning.